Well, I grew up out in the desert in Southern California in a very small, boring town. My, my folks would play stuff like, you know, Little Richard and, you know, Bo Diddley and this kind of stuff in the house, Ray Charles. But then the kids in my neighborhood were, were listening to like Kiss, Queen. But it wasn't until I discovered the Ramones that I thought I might be able to participate and actually play music. And um, I bought Ramones records and I, you know, pieced a drum set together and, and I just taught myself how to play drums to Ramones records. And then when I was done figuring out that, I picked up a guitar and taught myself how to play guitar to Ramones records. And then I never stopped. <laughs> Yeah, I think we epitomized the, the DIY movement in the uh, early 80s. Um, we took that to heart um, because there was nothing. And we were super bored and super frustrated. And uh, some of us were super creative. And, and we just went to work. And part of it was, uh, was entertainment. But I think a lot of it was just needing to do something. With, with just you know the energy, you know, and uh, skateboarding and punk rock was synonymous back then, you know, and, and um, yeah, we just created a scene. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't know. I mean, we certainly didn't know it would become this. You know, that's just a, a, a ironic twist that we were so motivated to do something for ourselves because we realized no one or nothing was going to happen for us. I currently have a band that I've been playing with for years, and we're very much a band, even though it's under my name. We're very much a band. Um, I recorded my first solo record in 1999 called Halamanta, and I did everything myself, but that was mostly because of the urgency and, and, and the fi financial reality of that particular moment. I just didn't really have the time or the means to put a band together. Um, and being a, a, a guitar player and a bass player and all this, I just, I just kind of just did it by, by myself. I mostly am really more, more excited to play with my band because music's about interacting and communicating with other musicians, you know. Uh, well, Jacuzzi, that particular record was a record that I recorded in 2010, and then I shelved it for obviously many years. And then um, it just happened that uh, Gabrielli, who owns uh, and operates Heavy Psych Sounds Records out of Rome, uh, we decided to work together. And um, it's a perfect platform for what I do and the catalog that I, that I have and, and, and for unreleased material. And, uh, and these things didn't really exist. Certainly not when I first started in 99, but even in, even as late as 2010, there wasn't the platform and infrastructure that we're seeing right now. So I'm really lucky that I, I've been around long enough to be able to inject my past into the present. <laughs> I've been touring for quite some time and I've gone through a number of um, amplifiers and, you know, being in, in the rock, um, world, I mean, I think I speak for uh, uh, most rock musicians, we want that classic rock sound, it's not easy to obtain, and if you do have it, sometimes it's not easy to lug around, and uh, I gotta credit my uh, guitar player, Bubba Dupree, who's, uh, he's, he's way more of a technical wizard than I am, so I just kind of follow his lead, <laughs> and um, he discovered the pedal baby, the orange pedal baby, and he's like, I think I've, I think I've found it. I think, uh, you know, we now carry our sound on our backs and, and um, we can go where we need to go and do what we need to do the way we need to do it. And it's pretty much because of that thing. <laughs> you know, we've spent many years locating the, the exact pedals that will get us what we want. And um, it's, it's a real, it's deep, man. It's a trip because, you know, we, we obsessed and we're fascinated by these classic tones that are just, will never really be uh, gotten, but we, we have fun trying to get as close as we can in the modern context, you know, because 
I mean, Hendrix was playing out of three stacks, and, but he was also playing in front of, you know, 5,000 people, you know. We're not all lucky enough to be doing that every night. So like, but we want that sound. We don't want that sound to die with an era. And, and uh, there's elements of purity that you want to kind of use the same stuff. But in the end, it's, it's, it's the sound we want. And uh, I mean, I'll rub two sticks together if it gets, gets that sound that I want, you know? So um, this, this here, it just works perfectly with our pedals and it just allows us to kind of be mobile and it's a really, um, you know, it's awesome. Alley Bolt's very, wants to help you. This wants to help you. <laughs>